In July of 2021, President Biden signed an executive order promoting competition in the American economy. A provision of this order will promote the availability of low-cost hearing aids and more transparency around their features and pricing. To discuss what this means both for the hearing aid market and people with hearing loss, I'll be interviewing Janice S. Lintz, founder and CEO of Hearing Access and Innovations, and an all-around expert on hearing healthcare and policy. Janice, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Just to kind of give our listeners a bit of context, um, I'm sure everyone listening can relate, but hearing aids are naturally very expensive, often costing upwards of $2,000 for a pair. Could you maybe explain some of the factors that contribute to these costs? Honestly, I'm not really sure why, because it shouldn't cost that much. And it's not clear why hearing aids cost so much money. And... Um, that's the million dollar question, literally. Why do hearing aids cost so much money? I mean, think about it. We have a cell phone. Well, you can't see it through here, but you have a <laughs> cell phone, right? And even a pricey cell phone is about $1,400. And what that cell phone does is so much more incredible than the hearing aids. It's not clear why hearing aids cost upwards of $8,000 plus then accessories. I'm not clear why it's so expensive. Way back in 2017, Congress passed a bipartisan proposal to allow hearing aids to be sold over the counter. One of the goals of this would be to lower the cost of hearing aids. Um, can you tell us like, kind of what happened with that proposal? When the bill was passed into law, it came um, with the requirement that regulations had to be added to this over-the-counter hearing aid. They didn't say what the regulations were or what should be part of the regulations. It was supposed to be submit um, for comment of what regulations should be, and, and they're just still languishing. So President Biden, um, you know, earlier this year, I actually wrote a letter to President Biden mm -hmm. um, asking like, like, okay, it's been a while, like what's happening with this? Why, why hasn't this moved along? Um, thankfully, President Biden in past, you know, wrote, you know, passed um, or signed into effect the executive order Yes. But it still hasn't moved. But I'm hearing rumors that we should be hearing shortly something. Okay. So that kind of brings me to my next question. Um, if everything works as intended, how exactly will Biden's executive order affect the hearing aid industry, particularly as it relates to people who are buying hearing aids or need them? It's not clear. Um, the problem mm -hmm. is we don't know what the regulations are going to be. Um, I know the regulations I want, and I actually submitted a petition to the FDA asking for my request to be part of the exec, you know, the regulations. Okay. I'm very clear what I want. One, I want telecoils mandated into air hearing aids, either over the counter or PSAPs, which is what over the counter hearing aids are, mm -hmm. um, because the pro telecoils, as we just saw before we started this, when you use Bluetooth, Bluetooth doesn't always connect. Also, Bluetooth burns through hearing aid batteries, which are very costly. And the more severe yes. your hearing loss, the more expensive the batteries are and the quicker you burn through those batteries. A telecoil connects electromagnetically um, to an induction loop and doesn't require um, connectivity issues. And it doesn't burn through batteries because it's not using the batteries, it's using electromagnetic. So for me, that's very important. But critical um, because people need sound directly to the hearing aids. Hearing aid companies don't like telecoils because it makes every single hearing aid exactly the same. So <laughs> if you're selling $8,000 hearing aids and you're saying, these are the greatest noise canceling or they're math, you know, they work with masks or they, their restaurant, you know, we don't know if all these things are the same, they really work or people are peddling snake oil. And so for me, this became very personal because my daughter at one point was told hearing aids no longer work for her by quote, a top audiologist. And she said she needed a cochlear implant. Well, it turned out there was a hearing aid that, that existed, but it was a hearing aid she didn't sell. I had to go directly to Starkey in Minneapolis. And how did you find out Starkey would have that? 
custom made thing. Well, it's a dirty oh. little secret in the industry and it's becoming less custom because of algorithms, but it, the way they fit hearing aids in Minneapolis in the, at Starkey is radically different. And that's another, uh, uh, let me footnote that. But because it'll complicate, but at the time they had this custom and it turned out they could fit my daughter with a hearing aid. She didn't need an implant. So here was somebody, an audiologist ready to do radical surgery on my daughter to kill the remainder of her cochlear because she didn't sell a hearing aid, didn't know about a hearing aid that existed. And meanwhile, my daughter uses it and has been using it for now since 2007, that's crazy. So we've kind of touched upon possibly like the broad language of Biden's executive order. As it is, do you think it will increase access to either affordable hearing aids or access to more transparent hearing health care? Oh, I'm confident it will. So I am the person who also approached um, Google, Bose, and Apple to enter the market. My feeling was when you have only what at the time was six companies, now five, and only one American company in the mix, that's a very insular industry. And the only way to drive innovation was to have more players in the market. And so to bring it back to the executive order, how do you think that stands to potentially disrupt the hearing aid industry? Well, it depends how far, it's hard to know what is going to pass and you know, I know what I've submitted as part of my petition, my letter to President Biden. I've been in contact regularly with Senator Warren's office. I know what I've asked for. Will it make it in? I mean, I wish I could control this. I could tell you for certain if I was yeah. in charge, this is what I would do. But I'm not in charge. And it's hard to know what's going to make it in. But I think the more people who send letters to the FDA, um, to the FDA chairman and to Senator Warren saying, we want telecoils and we want generic names for features. So, and we want the FDA to test using international ANSI, A-N-S-I standards. With the more people were demanding, not requesting, demanding this. Yes. That's how we affect change. We can't be complacent about this because the industry is such a financially lucrative industry and we have to take back control of our own hearing. Mm -hmm. I wanna present like a hypothetical. So a few months ago, my grandmother in her nineties, she goes to look at hearing aids, she goes to an audiologist and they fit her, they give her a hearing evaluation and they match her with a pair of medical grade hearing aids that cost her $4,000, she buys them. In an ideal world, it, let's say this executive order checks off every one of your boxes. What would be different about that experience? She would know that those hearing aids deliver what the audiologist said they deliver. So for example, mm -hmm. if you have two pair, look, when you go to an audiologist, they're not covered carrying every single hearing aid in the market. Yes. Right? They're, collect, they're offering a selection of hearing aids. And that selection is based on, tends to be, easiest to program and generates the highest profit, right? You're not going to pick things hard to program that take enormous amount of time or that you don't make enough money because that would defeat the point of being in business. Yeah. And so, certain manufacturers also have their own like proprietary places as well. Right. And so let's say your grandmother purchased hearing aids. Maybe she went to Joe, but maybe mm -hmm. Ann down the block had better hearing aids that would have worked for her, but he didn't sell them. Is he going to tell her that? So how does your grandmother know she got the right hearing aids for her when she can't compare them? So maybe to kind of wrap it up, what would you, what would be maybe three bullet points? Doesn't have to be limited to three, but like what would be the main things you want to change about the hearing aid industry? Well, I'd like to have, you know, the telecoils, added mm -hmm. so people can when they go to museums and theaters hear the sound directly in the videos it's it's a misnomer to say your hearing aids are going to do all the heavy lifting they're not necessarily and, and an induction loop allows somebody who's in a museum a theater to hear the sound directly in their hearing aid through a telecoil 
because it may not work and you even if let's say your hearing aid is let's say better than others right let's say it is tested and it does work fabulous you kind of sometimes still need the telecoil and you should have belts and suspenders right you should have a backup system and i want to see the telecoil mandated because it allows you to be able to hear any cell phone if you pick up a cell phone in an emergency think 911 you don't always get to a choice of which cell phone you're picking up when the plane's crashing through your building right mm -hmm. and i hope that's the only time but the problem is we all face emergencies regularly and you don't always get to a choice which cell phone you're picking up to to say to call someone in an emergency so a telecoil is critical i'd like to see that mandated i'd like right. to see international anti standards and generic names I mean, generic names for features and testing with international ANSI standards. I'd also like to see Medicare and health insurance cover hearing aids. Oh, yes. It is ridiculous that Medicare, and I know this is something Senator Warren's office is working on, but it is ridiculous that Medicare does not cover hearing aids and health insurance, right? This is a critical thing. If, I mean, it just, to me, it makes absolutely no sense. And it's time to remind people hearing is about hearing aids is about hearing and not job employment and hearing aids should not be the new status symbol of the rich. That's a really good tagline. <laughs> I like that. Um, do you have anything else you think you'd like to add or that we didn't touch upon? No, that's I think that's pretty much sums up all the problems um, that I'm, you know, again, my opinion. I hope this was helpful for you. Oh my gosh, yes, I think it's it was definitely helpful for me. I'm sure it'll be helpful for our readers as well. I really appreciate it, Janice. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you for doing this because it's a really, I, I don't think people understand what the issues are and they're so dependent and reliant on people who may not have their best interest at heart. And it's really upsetting. On that note, well, thank you so much and you have a great day, Janice. I really appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, you too. Have a great day and thanks for including me. I appreciate it.